Two of the Cotswolds' most famous villages, Upper Slaughter and Lower Slaughter, are the subject of this video. We will visit both the villages, see the churches, the water's edge views, the manor houses, and perhaps even some magenta flowers. And at the end of the video, we will have a delicious cream tea in a particularly memorable setting. But first, let's talk about these funny names. Slaughter does not refer to killing or butchering animals. Upper and lower slaughter were named as such because slough in Old English meant boggy place. And as you'll see in this video, there's a lot of water in these picturesque villages and a few boggy places. It's a peaceful morning in lower slaughter. Lower Slaughter is one of those quintessential villages in this part of England, with rows of centuries-old homes made from honey-colored Cotswold stone, with the added benefit of the River Eye and many lovely water views within it as well. Another low pedestrian bridge here in Lower Slaughter, and the River Eye that runs through both Lower and Upper Slaughter certainly is a focal point for the two villages. This is my favorite part of Lower Slaughter, is this old mill, which still has a working water wheel. And behind the water wheel, is this gift shop, the mill shop and museum, and they have lovely ice cream in here. It's 10 a.m., so I don't think I'll be having any, but it is very yummy ice cream. Here are the flavors they have on offer today. Last time I came here, I had some flavor of the month that was really interesting, like rose petal or something. And if you want to buy toadstools for your own garden, here's the place to get them at the mill shop in Lower Slaughter. They've also got some lovely bird baths. And here next to the ice cream shop is something that makes me think of Harry Potter and Quidditch. And if you'd like to just walk down this little slope into the inviting cool water, you might be tempted, but you're only allowed to do that if you're on horseback. Just like I said in Borton on the Water, it's lovely in a place like Lower Slaughter to step away from all the crowds and just come over to the river and listen to the rushing water. This is the old well in Lower Slaughter, but it's from 1875, not super old in the Cotswold scheme of things. Now would be a good time to click the subscribe button and the bell so you can join us for our continued exploration of Cotswold treasures. I'm a wee bit obsessed with flowers like roses or wisteria climbing up houses and around doorways, so I feel compelled to share a few lovely examples of the houses and flowers we saw. The Slaughter's Manor House in Lower Slaughter is nestled within five acres of stunning landscaped gardens. It is a four-star hotel and restaurant inside a 17th century house, which was previously owned by the same family for 350 years. St. Mary's Church in Lower Slaughter was largely rebuilt in 1867 by the Lord of the Manor, though the oldest parts of the church date back to the 13th century. This is a relatively small church, not very elaborate, but I really love this old font that's here by the entrance and you can see the ropes to pull the bell for the bell tower. I did have my chance to experience being a bell ringer when we visited the Dunthesbournes. Make sure you watch that video. On the drive from Lower Slaughter to Upper Slaughter, we see the gorgeous Upper Slaughter Manor. So this is the Ford in Upper Slaughter. And honestly, just sitting here next to this wee bridge, looking up at the beautiful 
Cotswold homes and buildings up the hill. This is such a quiet, peaceful corner. I wouldn't think that I was in Upper Slaughter. I guess it helps that I'm here on a Wednesday at 11 a.m. during the pandemic. I love meeting people when I'm traveling, even better when they are cute and color coordinated and let me take a photo of them for Instagram. And best yet, when they let me interview them. Okay, I'm wandering around Upper Slaughter and I met these lovely Glaswegians. I love saying Glaswegian. <laughs> it's a weird thing about me. So, um, so where's your favorite place in the Cotswolds? Because I know you come here all the time. Uh, Upper Slaughter. Upper Slaughter. Or Bibbery. Bibbery. I, you don't know how to say it either, neither no. do I. <laughs> Oh, Yes. Oh, lovely. Again, yes. It's, it's very little yes. there, but it's a lovely place to Nonten's go. Lovely. So do you stay near Upper Slaughter then when uh, you come? We're just up here. Just up ah. here. We're just up there. So you can walk to everything. Yeah. Staying up the hill in alms houses. Oh, uh, oh, so you're staying in the poor house then? Yes, yes but yes. we're Scottish. Oh, <laughs> you should not per be perpetuating these stereotypes. <laughs> stone is what makes this area so special all the buildings and then the roofs are actually covered in thin pieces of stone as well rather than slate or tile flowers, roses climbing the front wall, and then these beautiful magenta peonies. All over Upper Slaughter, I found gorgeous homes and pretty magenta flowers. It was a fun visit for me. You can tell by the bell and this sign that this is a church school from 1846. In case you think this old schoolhouse would be a charming place to make your home, you should know that it last sold two years ago for about 850000 So plan your budget accordingly. This red foam box defibrillator is in one of the prettiest spots here in Upper Slaughter. St. Peter's Church in Upper Slaughter was built originally in the 1100s and contains many Norman features. It has a nave, chancel, west tower, south porch, north chapel, and north aisle. My favorite part of the church were the 12th and 13th century arches with their beautifully detailed carved chevron patterns. It looks a little bit similar to the church in Lower Slaughter, but I think a bit nicer and a bit older. So Ian is telling me about the, what are the arches? Well, yeah. they're in Norman style, except they're pointed, so they're obviously a restoration of something, maybe a Victorian restoration of an arch that might have been rounded originally. And here you can really see the ropes for, for pulling the church bells. The font is from the 15th century. There are two manor houses in Upper Slaughter. This one, Upper Slaughter Manor, is shown in the drone photography throughout this video. This photo shows the very stately drive at its entrance. And now for a look at the other house, Lords of the Manor. Here is the place we are going to try out cream tea. This is an example of a place we wouldn't pay to spend the night or even eat an evening meal in because we are too cheap. But we wanted to experience this fancy hotel and their delicious food. And we were surprised to discover that the gardens were even more amazing than we expected. So come along and discover it all with us. The flowers at the entrance were beautiful. My favorites, of course, being the magenta roses and foxgloves. The pink roses growing around the window caught my eye, but then I noticed these characterful grotesques on either side of the window as well. They look like they each have an interesting backstory indeed. 
Now we're in the back garden of Lords of the Manor, and this looks like the largest, most ominous weed to ever grow in anyone's back garden. But I'm sure it's actually some lovely plant I just am ignorant about. But then over here, we have to go check out this little magenta corner over here. Oh, look how pretty this is. The walled garden behind the hotel was well manicured and beautifully tended to. garden with all kinds of thyme and mint, mint and rosemary. Over the summer, I saw thousands of orangey red poppies, but it was here I discovered the poppies in various shades of purple as well. So we're happy because we're here with this beautiful view in this direction of the rolling hills. And then in this direction, we have some lovely flowers, including some magenta flowers and this lovely manor because it's lords of the manor hotel and we're here for a cream tea with a gorgeous view and look at this there's blue sky there wasn't this morning when we woke up i can already tell that these scones are going to be a lot better than the ones we had in our last tea and the strawberry jam, clotted cream look good. And here we have my rooibos tea and Ian's super fruit tea. And look at our fancy little strainers that we have here. Every time I have a video about scones, people tell me, I put butter on my scone before the clotted cream and jam. And so this time I'm doing it to appease my subscribers that are so vocal on this topic. Putting some butter on the scone first. I have put jam on this scone first and I'm attempting to put the clotted cream on top. You can't spread it. It's too hard. It just makes all the jam slip off the scone. So basically, if you're gonna take clotted cream and put it on top of the jam, it has to just all sit in a blob in the middle. So that's the problem I have, you jam first people. It does not allow for a distribution of clotted cream across the scone, in my opinion. Please give me your rebuttal in the comments. Okay, to give equal billing to jam first and cream first, on my plain scone, I put clotted cream first and then jam. And then on my fruit scone, I put the jam first and then the clotted cream, which was an utter mess, but there you go. And also on half of each scone, I put butter first. So there you go. We're doing it all of the different ways. So here's my verdict. I tried all the ways and I do think the butter on the scone first is actually a good idea. I mean, it's kind of gilding the lily, but it's kind of nice to do it that way. Um, the scones were fresh. They were, as you see, saw, they were really tall and puffy and fresh. Um, one of them was even still warm and kind of steaming when I broke it open. So that was great. I probably preferred the fruit scones um, and still cream first. But all in all, I would say thumbs up to Lords of the Manor for cream tea. I know that 12 pounds 50 might sound like a very expensive cream tea, but look at it this way. We didn't pay 50 pounds a person for dinner. 
and we also enjoyed an amazing walk around the property after tea, which is what I'm about to show you now. Just found this little cave with water dripping in it. And here's the stream here. We're just wandering around exploring after having our cream tea. So let's take a look at the skating pond that no one has ever skated on. Looks like it would be a little hard to get to because of all of the rushes. Remember how I told you slaughter means bog in Old English? Then appropriately, this property has a bog garden. Yes, there are other flowers in this garden other than magenta, but of course the best ones are magenta. Upper Slaughter is a noteworthy English village because it's what's called a doubly thankful village, a place that lost none of its residents in either the First World War or World War II. I hope that you're subscribed so that you join us for all of our upcoming fun. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.